Hi, I'm Mark uh, Nyrink. I'm, 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 thanks for, so much for having me. Um, I'm going to tell you about the biggest rotating things in the universe, or at least the longest rotating things in the universe. Um, so this is a Saifu talk, uh, more broadly than that, because art plays a role in it. Um, so everything spins, I would argue. Um, well, with some little caveats, it gets ambiguous for subatomic particles, whether that's actually what we think of as spin. But from molecules like hydrogen molecules through tops and planets and um, galaxies, which are, of course, very big already, um, things spin. Um, there's also, for some reason, a, a Toblerone here. Uh, hopefully that will, well, I'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, but it, I should say that um, we're, we're used to thinking, thing, thinking of things as not spinning because they're usually attached to the ground. <laughs> um, but objects, one issue with this is that objects can be ambiguous. So here's a random blob in, of air in the atmosphere. Um, it, if you sum up the angular momentum in there, it's non-zero, but does that mean it's a spinning object? Um, I would say not really, but it, mainly because it's not really an object. It's, but fortunately, the universe on large scales isn't quite as much of a mess as this is. So this is this shows the density field in a um, in a simulated two-dimensional universe with dark matter in grayscale and um, sort of galaxies in in yellow. Um, we, and we think the universe looks a little bit like this on scales much bigger than galaxies, like millions of light years. Um, so thankfully we have there are these sort of fold edges that um, that delineate structures to some degree and that's actually something that we realized relatively recently um, this looks a little bit like something organic even um, and indeed you can make that with make a, an approximation to that with uh, with fabric stretchy fabric that you can gather where you can gather patches of it with a little um, rubber bands and it, they actually make these filaments also for very different reasons than in the, the, the gravitational case. But um, actually, I, I found this to be really cool for out, outreach workshops. Um, but also, it's helping, help, helpful for scientific understanding, particularly if you make things more tractable by removing the, the degree of freedom that corresponds to stretching and making it into origami. Um, and origami tessellations, the art that I mentioned, definitely inspired this. Um, so. The simplest way to make a clump in origami um, is called a, a triangular twist fold. So in this uh, model, you actually turn a, a polygon by some angle, and that produces some some pleats coming off of it, and that suggests spin. Um, so th this is you can both make a single node like this or a network of nodes, which is more like the, the actual universe. Um, and these nodes, or sorry, these the, the turning nodes here can extrude in three dimensions to filaments. So here's a um, here's the Toblerone, uh, it's kind of a twisting tor Toblerone in the universe that connects two tetrahedra, which represent galaxies. And this is a very crude approximation, but um, but in but it sort of corresponds to reality. And in particular, galaxies spin only if the filaments around them also spin. So that suggests that, that um, filaments spin in the universe generally. And there are other reasons to think that they might spin. They, uh, galaxies around them tend to spin in, in certain ways. Um, so, OK, we measured in a computer, in a cosmological simulation called the Millennium Simulation that generally uh, these filaments between galaxies spin. Um, which in retrospect wasn't a huge surprise actually, but it was the first demonstration of this. Um, and what we did was we oriented the spin or along each filament between galaxies so that you get a positive signal, but that positive signal is was large. Um, so they generally spin substantially. So here's a movie, which might be a bit choppy, but if you want to look up the, the um, other movies that wouldn't move, so choppily, um, the links are at the bottom. So here we, here, this is a particularly striking uh, filament from the sample, and gold streaks move along with the snapshot of the velocity field here. Okay, so, uh, but also even more gratifyingly, um, the this prediction turned out to be true in the real universe. So, um, so here are some observed filaments that a group, including uh, uh, 
well, the, the authors are shown here. And um, what they found was that filaments on the sky tend to be rotating. Um, it looks a bit like an umbilical cord here. Um, on one side, if you if the filament is along the sky, on one side the galaxies are moving toward us, and then on the other side are, they're moving away from us, and that's basically rotation. And the rotation curve basically matches what we what we pre predicted. So, all right, in high occlusion, um, cosmic filaments twist fold twist fold origamically with non-zero spin. So, thanks.